the solar system. It's no longer about the eight main planets anymore. Sorry, Pluto. A new planet has entered the fray, and it's hurtling toward Earth. At first, it looks small, but then it starts to get closer and closer. That's when you realize it's bigger than Earth. It's a massive gas giant, just like Jupiter. As this mysterious planet approaches, its magnetosphere will interact with Earth's. This will create a lot of thunderstorms, as well as some beautiful auroras in the sky. But the beauty wouldn't last long. Before you know it, waves would rise high in the ocean, pulled by the new planet's gravitational force. Earthquakes would spread all across Earth, You'd find it harder to breathe as our atmosphere gets pulled away. Because of this new gravitational pull, Earth is breaking apart into chunks. All living things on our planet are enveloped in cold and dark. Life on Earth is over. But wait a second, how did we get here? Could a new planet form in our solar system? Or could it wander in and affect the Earth's orbit? Maybe there's an undiscovered planet already out there. This is What If, and here's what would happen if we discovered a new planet in our solar system. Okay, before we fish for more of these answers, let me show you an awesome game I've been playing. Fishing Clash, the sponsor of today's episode. You know, I really like fishing, but as you can see, I'm making videos for you guys and don't get to spend as much time on the water as I'd like to. But with Fishing Clash, I can get the fishing experience right from my phone. It's cool, you can strategize and use different pieces of equipment to catch all kinds of fish. Marlin, salmon, bass, trout, and more. You can also play in different locations around the world and even create your own fishing village. One of my favorite features comes from Fishing Clash partnering up with Major League Fishing. I love it. You get the thrill of competing in real-life MLF events and winning in-game rewards. There's also duels, daily competitions, and clans. Want to play? Well, then go ahead and scan the QR code or check out the link in the description to download Fishing Clash. And then, once you're in the game, use my code WHATIF for a free $20 gift. You can get special items and fish to help you get started. To redeem the code, just follow the steps on screen and type in the code WHATIF to receive your in-game rewards. Okay, before we get to any new planets, first let's figure out where our current ones come from. Well, the answer lies in the stars. When a new star is born, it's enveloped in gas and dust. This spins into a donut-shaped disk. Planets start off as minuscule grains of dust, even smaller than the width of a single strand of hair. Hard to believe, I know, but it's true. Due to gravity and other forces, the tiny particles in the spinning disk collide. These collisions can make the dust clump together, first into pebble-sized chunks and then into bigger rocks. These are planetesimals. Now, if we wait a couple more billion years, this is how the planets in our solar system formed. Well, no, not anymore, because after about three to 10 million years, solar winds from our sun blew away all the dust and gas used to make new planets. With the gas and dust dispersed into space, there's no chance of forming new planets in our solar system. If we did discover a new planet, it would be one that's already out there. We just need to find it. Well, luckily for us, there's speculation that a new planet might already exist in our solar system. This is Planet 9. Based on scientists' calculations, it may be sitting in the outer regions of our solar system, orbiting our sun. So why didn't we know that this planet exists? Did we just not see it because it's small? No, estimates put Planet 9 at the size of Neptune, with a mass of maybe 10 times that of Earth. We've missed it all this time because of its highly elongated orbit. 
This has put it at a distance in our solar system that's even further than Pluto. It doesn't really affect Earth. Its, it's orbital path is 400 to 800 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And the time it takes for Planet Nine to make a full revolution around the Sun? 10,000 to 20,000 Earth years. Given this massive orbit, well, how did scientists even figure out it exists? Well, they looked closely at the Kuiper Belt. Situated beyond Neptune, this circumstellar disk contains asteroids, comets, and other icy objects. But scientists noticed something weird was going on here. Some of the dwarf planets and icy objects had orbits that clustered together in an unusual way. This could be explained if there was a mystery planet exerting its gravitational force, causing these objects to cluster. Could it be Planet Nine? Well, we're not totally sure if it exists. Theoretically it does, but we haven't directly seen it yet. Now, this could change with the construction of the powerful Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile. It will be searching the skies. But if a planet can't form, and we're not totally sure about Planet Nine, then what are our options for finding a new planet in our solar system? Well, there could be a rogue planet. A rogue planet? Well, isn't that a planet that wears a rakish hat and an eye patch and a leather jacket? Well, not quite. Rogue planets are similar to regular planets, only they're not tied to a star. They first form around a young star, but then they might get kicked out of their solar system. This ejection could happen while different sized objects are whizzing past each other around the star. The heavier planet whizzing by may stay in orbit, throwing a planet with a lower mass out. That's one way a rogue is formed. Another way is when a star formation goes wrong. Maybe the star doesn't ignite and instead becomes a solitary gas giant. How many rogue planets could there be in our Milky Way galaxy? Well, one estimate puts it in the billions, but we don't know for sure. That's because rogue planets are very hard to detect. They give off very little light and at wavelengths incredibly hard to distinguish from background emissions. So what would happen if one of these rogue planets suddenly entered our solar system? Well, that would depend on a couple of different factors. The velocity of the planet, its size, and its trajectory. Now, we've already looked at what would happen if a Jupiter-sized planet was headed for Earth. That was pretty ugly, but what if, instead of this planet smashing into us, it just wandered close to Earth? Well, that all depends on what we mean by close. If a rogue gas giant the size of Jupiter was wandering even three million kilometers away from Earth, well, terrible things would happen. Since Jupiter is 300 times the mass of Earth, it exerts an incredible gravitational force. As the planet got closer, we'd feel the effects of its magnetosphere. It would be filled with charged particles made up of electrons, protons, and tons of radiation. Then it would come for us here on Earth, destroying life on the planet. As this huge planet got even closer, massive tidal waves would rise up, causing catastrophic floods. So if the radiation hasn't killed us off yet, we'd drown. Then Earth would crack open. Volcanoes would erupt, lava everywhere, apocalyptic stuff. Okay, so note to self, no welcoming any rogue Jupiters into our neighborhood not even for a swing by. But forget these gas giants. What about something smaller, say an Earth-sized planet that snuck into our solar system, or a Pluto-sized dwarf planet? Let's explore these options. Well, if either of these planets were on a collision course with Earth, things would get pretty rough. A 100 kilometer wide asteroid that crashes into us would end all life on Earth. And even the dwarf planet Pluto is 2,200 kilometers wide, making a head-on collision with us devastating. Now, if they didn't collide with us and collided with Mars or Venus instead, well, we'd probably get showered with debris from the collision. If the debris is small, and by small I mean less than one kilometer wide, humanity would pull through with just 
some local damage, but a bigger asteroid could have devastating effects. Remember the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago? It was only 10 to 20 kilometers wide. And still, it was goodbye T-Rex and goodbye to most life on Earth. But what are the odds of actually getting hit by a rogue planet? Well, one estimate puts it in the likelihood of less than one in two trillion within the next 1,000 years. So what if another planet, Mercury or Earth-sized, swung by close to us? Well, another planet swinging by could produce a similar effect to that of the Moon. It could alter our tidal forces in significant ways. But it all depends on the planet's size, mass, and the distance away from us. Let's say a rogue planet the size of Mercury decided to pass by. Well, Mercury is about one and a half times the size of our moon, so its effect on our tides would be stronger than what we see today. But what if it got closer? Well, if it were half the distance of our moon, it would cause high tides more than eight times higher than today's. Floods would overwhelm our coastal cities. But that's not all. Mercury would also be exerting a pull on Earth's land, causing earthquakes and volcanoes again. Now, what if it was another Earth passing by? Well, depending on where you were standing, you might see it above you. Then you'd be in an unusual situation, in the middle of two equally large masses. Each planet would exert an equal pull on you. You'd be in zero gravity. You, as well as most of the other stuff on Earth's surface, would start floating. Fun. The bad news is our atmosphere would float away. Everything would come loose. Ocean, crust, bits of mantle. They'd cause debris to float between the planets, and this debris would begin to orbit the planets, too. Both our Earth and the other Earth would lose a lot of energy and slow down. Eventually, they'd collide. Okay, now how about another much more fun possibility? Like, could another Earth jump into our orbit and co-orbit with us? That could be cool. Maybe we'd have another place to call home. Maybe the two Earths would share the same circular orbit. But there's another intriguing possibility. Co-orbiting Earths might follow horseshoe orbits. Each planet orbits the Sun in its own horseshoe track, with the two half circles facing each other. While this might sound unlikely, we do observe real-life horseshoe orbits. Saturn's moons, Janus and Epimetheus, follow horseshoe orbits about 150,000 kilometers from the planet. So, in theory, if we had two Earths, they could orbit in this horseshoe pattern. Now, how long would it take to travel along our horseshoe and come near our twin? One estimate puts it at about 33 years. And with neither Earth completing a full revolution around the Sun, well, one of us would be in perpetual summer and the other in perpetual winter. I know which one I want to live in. Now, the chance of this happening with a new rogue planet that just wandered by? Probably close to zero, but I gotta say, booking a vacation on another Earth does sound pretty cool. So let's say we discover a new planet inside our solar system, and lucky for us, it's not going to hit any of our planets. Are we safe? What if it's heading for a direct collision with the Sun? Then there are three possibilities, depending on the crash site and the momentum with which the crash happens. The collision could happen in the outermost layer of the Sun. If a planet the size of Jupiter crashed into the Sun, it would give off an incredible amount of kinetic energy. It could make the Sun brighter for tens of thousands of years. Another possibility is a crash right into the center of the Sun. Now, if this happened, there would be less energy in the outer layer and smaller effects on the sun's brightness. But here's another scenario. What if, for some reason, rolling Jupiter slowed down as it approached the sun? Well, then there would be less kinetic energy to transfer. The planet would get shredded. Its core might form a disk around the giant ball of fire, blocking the sun's light. The amount of sunlight reaching Earth could be reduced by up to 20%. In addition, the amount of the Sun's radiation hitting Earth would change. 
It's unclear whether it would increase or decrease. All depends on the type of disk that forms. Another frightening scenario that could happen, what if a new rogue planet in our solar system shoved Earth out of orbit? If this happened, there are a number of things that could change. With Earth having a new orbital path, our seasons would differ significantly. Maybe we'd experience a new ice age. Or our summers would become scalding hot. The second is a change to our orbital plane, the flat disk-shaped space that all the planets orbit in. Popping out of that plane would mean we'd fall out of step with the other planets. Once this happens, over time, we might get more and more out of sync. Who knows, this might lead to us eventually wandering out of the solar system. Outside of our current orbit, the Earth might take longer to go around the Sun. We might have to add a 13th month to our calendar. Or maybe we just give February a few more days. But a big shove might actually eject us from the solar system altogether. If this happened, well, obviously we'd lose our Sun and we'd freeze and die. Or if you were shoved out of orbit and bumped toward the Sun, well, things would get pretty hot and we'd fry. I don't know about you, but after looking at all these possibilities, I'm feeling pretty happy that we haven't discovered new planets wandering around in our solar system. Yeah, there's Planet 9, but right now, that's just a mysterious possibility. We're putting up a sign for new planets to stay away. Collisions are catastrophic. Near misses are deadly, and pushing us off our orbit would bring on an ice age. Even if a new planet self-annihilates into the sun, it could be a problem. The only possibility I like? Us and another Earth in horseshoe orbits within the Goldilocks zone. Endless summer. I hear it's super unlikely, but if we absolutely have to encounter a rogue planet, I'm holding out for that one. But. What if, instead of a new planet finding us, we ventured out of the solar system to find one ourselves? There are some that could actually be a better version of our Earth. But that sounds like a story for another What If. And before you go, don't forget to download Fishing Clash by clicking on the link in the description or scanning the QR code. And remember to use my code, WHATIF, for a special in-game reward.